Hi, this is Frida. I'm a researcher with CSPR uh, and at Linköping University uh, Environmental Change and also Child Studies. Uh, and I'm here in Glasgow uh, where I've participated in COP26 and I've been observing the young, mem the young uh, participants here uh, at COP26, uh, talking to them about their experiences here, um, both the, the youth constituency uh, of UNFCCC, but also uh, the young activists who um, who were there uh, trying to get uh, their voices heard through different types of actions. And yet now I'm heading back home to to Sweden, and I'm actually downtown experiencing a little bit of, of Scotland, uh, hearing some music here in the background. Um, but otherwise, I've been mostly contained within the conference venue uh, where I've covered the youth participation at COP and the youth representation there, both um, in terms of um, uh, talking to the to younger, the youth constituency, but also the young climate activists who have been there, uh, talking about their experiences, what their hopes uh, and fears have been. Um, and then just now, uh, they did a big walkout with the entire civil society uh, from the big plenary uh, hall, which was uh, pretty a pretty intense experience. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens now in the upcoming upcoming uh, days. Okay, so here we are, last day of COP, at least for me, with an almost empty venue that feels quite quite surprising when it's been so full and so hectic the whole week. Uh, personally, yeah, it's been a bit tough to follow all the negotiations, I suppose, but it's been interesting to see all the back and forth as well, and uh, quite surprising that they managed to find some agreements eventually. You understand why it takes so long when you're there and you see all the different voices. Really interesting to see protests inside and outside the venue to see that it's become this sort of uh, social subject that people talk about and are passionate about, but it was nice to see a politicization of uh, climate question. I suppose. Okay, hi, Matthias Friedahl from uh, the Center for Climate Science and Policy Research, uh, talking a bit about my impressions of this COP, uh, COP26 in Glasgow. And I think it's uh, gone off to a very nice start. It was very productive negotiations already from the first week, or starting to find uh, common landing zones and compromises and talking and engaging with each other rather than restating positions that we have seen a lot about the, the previous years it's been a lot about restating positions so it's been a constructive uh, i think um, um, climate for for the negotiations and now we're heading towards the end of of these negotiations uh, we're on the final 24 hours i would say uh, we're seeing lots of decisions emerging draft texts emerging from the um, process and they have been able to find compromises in, and balanced text in many regards. We, we still, of course, lack a lot of ambition in the, uh, let's say, the climate uh, um, work or the, the pledges that, we, that have been put forward. But we still see also, when it comes to the actual negotiations, quite nice progress. So I think we will have, by the end of, of uh, this day or tomorrow, Saturday, we will probably have a, a complete Paris Agreement rule book and we will have some processes moving forward to discuss uh, new and quantified long-term commitments for climate finance uh, and so on and so forth. So things have been moving relatively good when it comes to the actual negotiations. Of course, not so good when it comes to uh, climate pledges and what we need to do in practice to resolve the climate crisis.